Amen. Thank you for coming. God is a good God. The word of God brings new revelations and eventually changes our life. He who is bereft of the word of God will grow dry, but whoever receives the word, the seed is the word of God. Jesus said it will go into our soul, into our spirit, and into our body, and it will bring hundredfold fruit. Anytime I don't come for Sunday, I know we are growing weak. When a person does not come to church, there's no way he can grow stronger. Spiritually, they will grow weak, including pastors. They skip one Sunday, and it's, you know, unless they are on travel. And even when we are on travel, sometimes, most, 100% of the time, we make sure we find a church close by. And never miss a service. And that's how we've been brought up. So, the word of God that comes... You know, it will quicken our mortal body. Yes, we may have missed certain things. We may have skipped some things last week. We may not have prayed as we wanted to pray. But the word of God again will come and, and equip you and recuperate you and revive our spirit. Amen. Today's word is about being filled with God. When I was in California, I used to go around and... And I'm also planning to go around Carrollton this week, starting from this week. I know people are filled with things. Even a beggar on the street. I've seen many beggars on the street. They will load so many things on their back. Sometimes the bicycles are loaded. Their backs are heavily loaded. Sometimes... Even when they don't have money, they feel like picking things on the street. I was watching a garage of a person who was picking up a lot of things on the street. I saw one day I followed him. Where is he picking up? He picks up certain things on the road, you know, some uh, old bottles. He'll take it in his bicycle. And then I tracked his house. He had a big, huge house. And the entire the garage was filled with things that he's collecting all over the city. An old car, 1970s, there was an old car. And then he kept the car. On top of the car, he had like 100 things. And the Lord was speaking to me this morning, like we can actually fill our life with so many things. The human beings, we always want to collect. When you buy a new house, it is brand new. There's nothing in the house. You see, eventually, if you're not careful, soon your garage will be full. Your closet was very empty. Nothing was there. But now you go and see your closet. It is full. It's heavy. We have the tendency to collect and fill everything that's void. And it, so it is in the heart also. There's no human being on earth today whose heart is empty. Either it's filled with God or it is filled with some things. A human being cannot remain desolate or empty He's constantly filling himself. If there's no God, he's constantly filling himself with worldly things. St. Paul is saying in Ephesians 4, 13, Till we all come to the unity of faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God, and to a perfect man, and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So here he says we will continue to grow. We have to continue to grow because in the body of Christ, 4.11 says God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers. Why? We can all learn from them. They will teach and we will learn till we come to the fullness of Christ. So we have to be filled with God. If we are not filled with God, something is going to fill us. Either career is filling us. Either hobby is filling us. There's nobody who's idle on Sunday. Either they're on golf course or they are in church. They have filled themselves with some activity. Fishing, boating, bike riding, or mountain climbing. Every day they make sure they are filled. You ask any man, do you have time? No, brother, my calendar is full. I am full. 
you were empty long time ago but now you, you got a little bit of maybe a job and now you're still full you don't have time for god and you were without work without job you had a lot of time but now you have job now you have a little bit of money now you have a house you still don't have time for god because we already filled our time table filled our mind filled our heart with all things but paul is saying we have to have the fullness of christ only that can really fill us ephesians 3:19 says to know the love of god which passeth knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of god that is where we want to be ephesians 3:19 god says you may be filled with all the fullness of god what will happen if our heart is completely filled with god every time we think we think scriptures every time we open our mouth praises come that's what paul is talking about he says singing to singing psalms to one another encouraging one another with scriptures always giving thanks to god rejoice in the lord again i say rejoice pray without ceasing continuously thank god in all supplications let your requests be made known to god love one another with the love of god he said if you are filled with god we can see the fruit of god we can see the in the abundance of the fruit of the holy spirit but sadly satan has made sure that you know human beings are filled with things they are filled with everything except god Christ is the fullness of God. Colossians 1:19 says it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. All the fullness should dwell. Christ is the fullness of God. Sometimes we say where is God? Where is God? We got to see Jesus because the entire God says God was manifested in the flesh. We want to see God, see Christ, see Jesus. He is the fullness of God manifested in the flesh. In him The Bible says it pleased the father that in him in Christ all the fullness of God shall dwell. In the Old Testament God was giving laws and laws but when we come to the New Testament the Bible says it says Christ came full of grace and truth. That's why any sinner who came to Jesus you know they received that grace immediate forgiveness. The Samaritan woman immediately her lifestyle changed in a moment. just by conversing with Jesus she had five husbands and the five the fifth one she had was not her husband Jesus prophetically spoke to her and she saw the messiah in front of her mercy i was reading this week about the old testament where they kept the ark the ark was covered with gold but on top of it was a mercy seat which was full of gold completely and god was showing me even in the old testament which is a figurative of the new testament the mercy seat actually sat on top of the tablets the tablets were inside the ark the law was inside the ark but god put the mercy seat on top of the ark and even protected with the two cherubims telling us today that the predominant nature of god is mercy and mercy was sitting on top of the tablets and that's why when the adulterous woman came to jesus immediately jesus said as no one threw the stone upon you i won't throw the stone upon you i won't condemn you as no one condemned you i forgive you go and sin no more and i looked at the ark and the mercy seat it is jesus in the new testament who will actually pay the price and forgive all our sins and in the old testament jesus god was showing that his predominant nature is not punishment his predominant characteristic of god is mercy and the mercy seat was above the ark which means mercy triumphs over judgment many times we judge people but god says no i want to restore you i want to take you to your original state the fullness of god was in christ and paul is saying that we may be filled with god so what can the fullness of god can do number 1 the fullness of god can actually replace sin when you are full of god there won't be sin if a heart is full of god there won't be a, a lustful desire 
There won't be an inclination to tell lies. So when our heart is full of God, it can replace sin. The desires of the flesh will die. When we are full of God, sin has no place. Romans 6, 11. You reckon yourselves to be dead to sin, alive to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So when we are full of God, we can easily overcome sin. But when we are not full of God, sin can overtake. A Hollywood movie can take control of our mind. A Bollywood dance can immediately take us out of Christ. Verse 12 says, Let not sin reign in your mortal body that you may obey in its lust. And verse 14 says, Sin shall not have dominion. Romans 6, 14, It shall not have dominion when you are under the, not under the law, you are under grace. So sometimes we may try to overcome. Oh, I should not get angry. I should not beat my wife. I shouldn't get angry with my boss. Oh, I shouldn't beat my child. You know, sometimes all those, you know, I need to control myself. And we will never be able to control just using our willpower. Oh, I'm educated, I'm grown up, I, I can control my, no, 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 we can never control our, 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 the human flesh. The only way we can control is to allow more of God, to become full with God. Before you go to work, when you get up in the morning, Saturate yourself with the word of God. You won't get angry. You, even if your boss gets angry, you won't get angry. That's what I saw in my own life. Whenever I go in the past, if I skip one day, I can feel the difference. Hell will manifest. Anger will manifest. But when I am saturated with the word of God, nobody can make me angry. Nobody on the road can make me angry. Sin shall not have dominion when we are full of grace, full of God. Hallelujah. Number two, fullness of God brings joy. Psalm 16 verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. Thy presence is fullness of joy. If you are really, we really want to be happy. You know, human beings are looking to many, many sources to be happy. I saw a post that said, most people on Instagram, they look happy. But they're actually in real life miserable. TikTok or something. People, I went to a Christian home. There was a teenager, that lady was dressing, you know, coloring her head, you know, red colors, coloring her lips. Why? She wants to take a small video, like a 30 second video or something and post it on TikTok and, and social media. But is that she looks very happy on that video and that video. But most people, most teenagers are miserable. And they're not as happy as they look in that video. Nor are they beautiful as they look in the video. They look beautiful in the video. Or they make themselves look like they're coloring everything. But in reality, and people who look at that video say, oh, that lady, she has a very good life. Oh, that lady should be really rich. She should be very, very famous. She should be very happy. Look at that video. Look at that, you know, post. But you meet that person in real life. That's not reality. And that's why we should discourage kids getting into social media. That's not reality. People liking in social media, they're not real friends. But they're easy to click like. But in real life, who will be with you? Who can help you? Who can really mentor you? Who can be with you when you are alone? Or when you go through tough things? They're not the ones who are going to come. But it's so easy to say, click that like button. But when you are in trouble, nobody will be around you. So fill yourself with God. Fill. We need to fill ourselves with the presence of God. God will send helpers. God will send divine helpers. So the psalmist said, Psalm 16 verse 7, I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel even in the night seasons. Verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. The reason why you and I are confident, we know that God will stand at my right side. No matter what I go through in life, 
Even if nobody is around me, I know God will stand. He will not leave me. Because I have set the Lord always before me. If you set God, if we set God before us, if he's always our first priority, he will not allow us to be moved. Yes, there are challenges that will come, but God will deliver me. David is all right. He said, even though I go through the valleys of shadow of death, which means that he can really feel death. At one time when he was fighting the battle, you know, there was a giant who came very close to killing David, King David, because David fainted once in his life, fainted in the battlefield. But the armor bearer was so close and God made sure the armor bearer saw the giant and he tackled the giant before the giant can kill David. That's one time. God never allowed King David to be killed by a giant. He started his career with a giant, Goliath. He would have been finished with the giant. You know, the devil was wanting to finish David. There were many giants. And when I read that incident, I said, he killed Goliath and from that day there was an assignment to kill, Gol kill King David. And that was the day I said the giant would have killed him if not for God. If not for his dependency on God. If not for his psalms he wrote. If not for his, you know, completely sold out for God. He said, I have said the Lord always before me. Uh, is one thing you know, it's one day in your courts is better than a thousand. He said, I will always dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my strength. He will, even if I feel the shadow of death, which means death was so close, destruction will not come. I, need, I think that day he saw the shadow of death. The giant coming right before his eyes. What if the armor bearer was a little far away? These six foot giants. They have sometimes more fingers, six fingers. Six toes, six fingers. Huge giants. And he could see him coming. And he is fainted. What if the armor bearer was just a few yards away? And that's why we should be always full of him, full of God. He will protect you. The fullness of God, number three, can remove demons. Matthew 12, 43. When the unclean spirit goes out of a man, the unclean spirit does not take rest. He goes out, collects some more friends, comes back. Verse 44, he said, I will go back to the same place. And he comes, he's empty. There's no word, there's no praise, there's no sword of the spirit. And then he takes seven more spirits, verse 45. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. So which means that when a person is away from God, the last state is worse than the first. There are some people in India who drink. They start with one bottle. They skip coming to church. And eventually, the drinking becomes one, two, three, four. The number of bottles increases. Instead of drinking once a month, now they drink once a week. And then after that, it is once a day. And then finally, it is three times a day. Because the Bible says the last state is worse than the first. When they are not full of God, something will fill them. Even people who think that marriage, love is all we need. We don't need God. You know, some people who have this love marriages, they think we don't need anything in the world. We just need each other. We need each other. And after marriage, you see, you know, they're having so many troubles. And in fact, love marriages seem to have more troubles than some cases, in more than arranged marriages. They thought their, their marriage is sufficient to go through life. And after a while, they find that it's not as rosy as they see in the Bollywood movies. So the demons occupy our heart. 
the last state will be worse than the first. And that's why when the fullness of God comes, the demons will leave. But if God is not in our life, then the demons will increase. It will increase one, two, three, up to even 6,000. The legion, easily referring to 6,000 demons. You know, when the people of Israel forgot God, they thought they can live without God. They can live their life without God interfering in their life. Sometimes they thought that interference of God is taking their joy out of life. But after they left God, this is what they did. In Ezekiel 8.8, 8, God told Ezekiel, go now, dig in the wall. Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 8, dig now in the wall. And when I digged in the wall, behold a door and through the door, verse 9, he said, go through the door and see all the wicked things they are doing. In verse 10, I went and saw creeping things, abominable beasts. Ezekiel 8 10, I went in and saw every form of creeping things and Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 10. I went in and saw and behold every creeping thing and abominable beast and idols of Israel portrayed on the wall. We can manage up to But actually the Israelites thought the same thing. They thought we can live without God. And eventually... They were worshipping something. And Ezekiel was picked from Babylon. God brought him in a vision. They brought him into this place in Jerusalem where they were not idle. They were actually busily worshipping something. They were worshipping these creeping things, idols, and all the idols were portrayed on the wall. And verse 11, then there stood before them 70 people and in the midst of them stood Janiyah, the son of Shephen, and every man in a censer and thick cloud, incense went up. Men are worshipping something. In life, they will worship something. It's a matter of what they are worshipping. Human beings cannot live without worship. They will worship someone. They will worship some politician. They will worship some Hollywood actor. They will worship even their career. And if they have a lot of money, they want to go to Mars. And thinking that Mars will make them happy, but actually they'll go there, they will die. There won't be even food there. There won't be even good breathing air. They, will, they think they will, it will make them very happy, only to find out they'll go and die very fast. Even with all the good conditions on earth, when God made so many things, the atmosphere, you know, the air to breathe, with food supply in abundance, even here people are dying. What is the chance that they go there and survive? And most of them who try to go there, if you Google them, you'll see most of them are atheists. Because Jesus is not coming to Mars. Jesus is coming to Earth. And so they're building something. So as soon as something happens, apocalyptic even happens, they want to escape Earth. And then continue civilization in, in different planets. So they somehow think when the earth gets destroyed, they'll be able to escape out of the earth and then locate themselves in Mars. So why do they want to escape out of the earth? They think they can survive in Mars. But they don't know that the fire that burns earth will also burn Mars. In fact, it may start there and come down to earth. St. Peter said the elements will melt with fire. So nobody can escape God. And these Israelites, they thought they can worship not the God of Abraham. They can live without him. But they actually ended up worshiping creeping things. And Ezekiel 8.13 says, the women, they are crying now. They are crying. They are crying to Lord Tammuz 8.14. He brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house and behold, the women were crying for Tammuz. If we are not crying for God, we'll cry for someone. People are crying because their lovers left. 
the husband who was so cool, but afterwards he saw another one, he left, another women are crying. They didn't put God first, they just looked at the outward appearance. He said, I don't mind any, I don't mind if he doesn't go to church, I just like him. That's what the girl said, ah, I like him, he's cool. Forget about God, forget about church. And then the women weep. And they're weeping for Tammuz. Tammuz is a god of fertility. Leaving the god of Abraham, now the women are weeping. Why don't we cry for God? Why don't we cry all night? Why don't you pray all night? They didn't want that god. Now they're crying to Tammuz and praying for babies. Ezekiel 8.16 He brought Ezekiel to inner court and there were 25 men the back toward the temple of the Lord but the faces were toward the east worshipping the sun toward the east. Now they turned back on God. The temple of Jerusalem they turned their back on God. Now they are worshipping something. They have to worship something. They got to keep themselves happy. They try to keep themselves happy. And so now they turned toward the sun and started worshiping. They are the sun worshippers, worshiping the sun. You know, when people kick out Christianity, eventually there's more murder. Men are killing women. Look at Afghanistan now, what happens. Sometimes we think we are very righteous. America thinks very righteous. But America itself left God. How can you leave God and go to another country and try to establish another country? So after 20 years of military presence in Afghanistan, you come out. The nation is more turmoil than it was before. So the military and the Afghan AC gunships and the militaries and the helicopters did not actually transform people. Today, their people are getting killed. Because we are trying to establish a government, but we ourselves are not full of God. On one side, we are promoting ungodliness in America. We are killing innocent babies. Men and men are getting married. We have so much ungodliness here. And somehow we thought we can establish, bring peace in another country just by military presence, without God. Without bringing Christ into that country. Without, maybe instead of sending, you know, all these, um, um, the remote control to control what's on the, you know, ground, if we had sent more evangelists on the ground, and if we had planted more churches, that nation would have been far better today. But now, after 20 years, we come out. We are running. We are running because we might get killed. Hallelujah. The nation we need, America needs God. It has to be filled with God, not with everything. Technology, you know, economy, Wall Street. That's what America thinks every day thinking that will somehow revive the country and keep this country safe. And then we turned our back on God, removed Ten Commandments from the schools, and people are afraid to speak about God. In the Supreme Court, we are hoping somehow the laws will pass because there are few conservatives, and they're not vocally maintaining or speaking God. And so they have to worship something. They're worshiping the sun. But we are here today to fill ourselves more of God. The only cure for violence, murder, is the fullness of God. When we are filled with God, no man will try to kill another one. Fullness of God. In Luke 1.8, John the Baptist, he came from the desert, but he was filled with God. You know, sometimes we fill our children's timetable with activities. Sometimes we fill them with toys. The first toy that every child gets, I think most child get, is a fire truck. You know, they start with this fire truck. Red fire truck. Then they buy this policeman. 
Then then the police car comes. Now they thought it's no problem. It's only just small fire truck. But the child gets bored with the truck within one week or two weeks. He says, "I want a bigger fire truck." And then after a few weeks, the child says, "No, no, I want something that moves, battery operated." So the child is constantly looking for some satisfaction, but it's not coming from the toys. Eventually, the whole cupboard is filled with toys. Now he, the child has migrated to Legos. Now they are building Legos everywhere. Legos, you are building something, and then fancy Legos. You know, even helicopter Legos build bridges with Legos. And then the, after that, the child says, ah, "I don't want these Legos. Give to somebody else. Give to somebody else." I am thinking, if you just saved all the money from from that small fire truck and to this advanced, you can actually pay for your elementary school fees. you keep all that money all the gift card whatever you got from every birthday store it in a bank account you will see that the entire five year elementary school tuition fees you would have paid off and then after that keep saving it maybe whatever you gift you get tell them don't buy toys just give us gift cards or give us cash or check save that for another 5 10 years maybe it will pay off some college tuition fees You wonder where all the money came in America and disappeared. It all went to these toys, the Chinese toys. Some people build the whole daycare in the house. They don't even know go to the daycare inside the house. The whole daycare is ready. Then we got where is where where did where, where did I lose? In the meantime, the Chinese are praying over the toys. The Chinese. they pray over the toys they pray that buddhist prayer they pray let it go and bring more kids the entire market is kids and they pray and send these toys all over the world and we are buying like crazy we don't even know that it has been prayed that's why the kid is longing that for the toy and after the few minutes few months that toy has not given him happiness in fact he'll kick the toy and then the parents have to arrange it arrange the toys the amount of time you spend arranging toys can actually give you 30 minutes a day to pray and read bible and arranging the toys and the room is filled with toys i grew up without seeing toys because i only had coconut shells those were my toys and my mama will bring that you know the match box when the match boxes are empty we use that empty box that's my toy but i didn't spend money for those toys natural toys some shell coconut shell will fall that's a toy coconut leaves will fall those were my toys so god was reminding us how we can fill our life when mary was filled Luke 147 she said he hath filled me with good things she didn't have anything but she knew that her heart was full and verse 53 god has filled my hungry soul with good things she said i'm happy the angel appeared the angel said i am the blessed woman that's enough for me god has brought down the mighty and exalted the lowly and that's sufficient for me my soul rejoices in my god and spirit rejoices in my savior the only thing that can fill us is god and everything will diminish in glory one day all the fancy things will diminish in glory but you will shine brighter your face will shine brighter even the old people will become fresh and anointed when they have god fullness of god hallelujah i'm going to pray that god will be full of us full in our heart our heart will be full of god let's all stand we're going to pray hallelujah satra mapa Fill us today. Kai galay vurti ke pang karter. Namre ullatte na rappa vendam. Nothing in this world can fill our heart. 
St. Paul said that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Thank you, Jesus. Do not be drunk with wine, but verse Ephesians 5.20 says, be filled with the Spirit of God. Ephesians 5.18, be filled with the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God comes, then comes love, self-control, patience, goodness, temperance, faith, joy, peace. When we are filled with the Spirit of God. And Paul says, be filled with the Spirit of God. Thank you, Jesus. தினந்தோறும் உடைய பாதத்தில் நாங்கள் உட்கார்ந்த வார்த்தையை நாங்கள் சாப்பிட வேண்டுமாப்பா கைகளைக்கொள்ளுமா Your heart cannot contain it. It will warm it up. Out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth will speak. Lord, fill me today. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for filling our empty hearts today. Let nothing take the place of God. Let my heart be filled with your word, filled with your love. and fill with the knowledge of god and renewed in the mind of christ thank you jesus hallelujah let my heart be filled let our heart be filled the fullness of god and to the measure of the stature of the fullness of christ perfecting of the saints until we become perfect to the fullness of Christ equip us today equip us teach us fill us let there be nothing void empty in our life in our heart but everything be filled with god we'll get up in the morning thank you jesus speak to us as we go through the day speak to us as we retire to bed speak to us let not our heart deter from you deviate from you let not the riches and the cares of the world take the place of the word of god and let that word go deep in our soul occupy every part of our soul and bring forth hundredfold fruit in jesus mighty name we pray amen katra periya katra kodpoma hallelujah amen let's read the benediction katra yesu christ kripiya pidavaya devinanmu parishuddha vinaikum nadu indrum endrum sada kalathilum irpadaga ellorum serndhe naathmaave katra isothri mulume parishuddha naamathe isothri naathmaave katra isothri kartar seidha sagala nanmigile maravaadi I'm in Katar Periyakadar Gurupam. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Have a great weekend. God bless you.